to the human beings. And when the flood came, the progeny of these, these watchers, these angels, these rebellious spirits were destroyed. The bodies were completely destroyed and that immortal part of them, that spiritual force was left without a body. And so in ancient and the ancient Jewish sages, uh, the references to spirits and demonology, they always point back to that event of the flood as having created them from the Nephilim. This is the word they call them, the Nephilim, which is found in Genesis 6 also, which just means the fallen ones. And so here in the Book of Jubilees, it talks about how the Nephilim were destroyed and bound, but some of them were left on earth so that they actually could be used by Satan. They're actually used with God's permission to lead men astray because it's almost a judicial system where Christ has even talked about this idea of judging and judgment, how men can't judge, but after he rises from the dead, he says, you can judge. Now, how can you get authority over angels unless, of course, what Christ did was potent enough? But it's interesting is the law was a focus of Judaism. And the temple was a focus of where that actually was kept. And even the law, the tablets of the law were kept in the temple of Jerusalem. And that's actually called the land of Judah. The Jerusalem's in Judah. The word judice in Latin is where we get the word for judge or judicial. It all stems from that main point where the law actually emanates. Then, of course, in Ephesians, it talks about we're not actually, as a Christian, wrestling against humanity itself. Of course, there's enough about humanity that's difficult in itself, but it's saying that those rulers in heavenly places are what we're up against, and there's been an analogy drawn between the UFO phenomena and what's actually being spoken of here. On my first sojourn to the Roswell talks, my car stopped inexplicably three times, and I had to have my brother drive me from uh, Idaho. And I waited for a few hours and then he picked me up and I was transferring things into my car and he took a picture of it to chronicle it. Do you see anything interesting in the image? I'll close in. Look around here. That. We had no idea when it was there. But I understood why my car stopped. The electric system went out totally. And I went back to my car and drove fine all the way back home. Now here's where it gets heavy because Enoch talks about the end and he talks about those beings that were destroyed in the flood but they still have that component about them, the spiritual energy that's still there. And so he explains their nature and then what's going to happen with them later. The spirits of the Nephilim, which are the progeny of these watchers that came and bred with the daughters of Adam, are as clouds which shall oppress, corrupt, fall, bruise the earth. They shall be concealed and not rise up against the sons of men until they come forth during the days of slaughter and destruction. So what he's saying is they have a certain subtle nature until some point where they suddenly become very obtuse and, in, and very unfriendly. This is from the Quran. The Quran actually sets up the same precedent. It talks about how when Adam was made, God actually asked the angels to bow down to him. And the only one that didn't was Iblis, which was their word for Satan, just means the, uh, uh, the opposer, and he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't bow down. And so God said he was cursed. And so what Iblis' request was, you know, I, I can't be judged yet. Because I haven't been given, I haven't been given my day in court, or I haven't been able to collect the evidence so that I can present it in court. And so he asked that he wasn't going to have to be judged and condemned until the end of the whole matter, which is, which is, until the day when mankind shall be raised from the dead. That's in the Quran, so you can't, you know. It's very difficult and not PC to, to actually say the Quran's corrupt. You can say that Christianity is, and the Bible shouldn't be forced down people's throats. But this is something I actually agree with from the Quran. And now you should actually get to one of the most 
obvious things that come out of, uh, out of the New Testament when it comes to what the end times are about and Jesus' warning. And that is, it fits into, of course, the whole paradigm of 2012, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And at first you think, oh, maybe they're the orbiting luminaries, that, you know, the terrestrial planets, and they can mean that, but Dunamis actually is also translated as armies, or waiting armies, or forces, or hosts. And the heavens is the place of this order where the heavenly beings dwell. That's a legitimate translation of those two words. So what's amazing to this whole scenario is you find that God actually says, and this is a Septuagint, sorry, a Septuagint version of Isaiah 13, where he talks about, in the end, there's going to be a day, and that's actually a little bit intangible because it lasts longer than a day, but it's a point where God comes and judges, and he judges every man, and it's interesting that this phraseology is used again, just like in Luke 21, this old man shall be dismayed, troubled, pain shall seize them, and then Isaiah 13, 5 talks about, he gives a command, he brings them, he actually uses these destroyed Nephilim as an agency for destruction and judgment, which astounded me, but you can check this out in the actual uh, Old Testament Masoretic text. You can go to the Septuagint. It says this, are coming to fulfill my wrath, rejoicing at the same, at the same time insulting. So he's given a command to them to actually come back at a certain point. He gives them actual uh, power to do this. And you can actually see where he talks about uh, in Psalms, where the psalmist, supposedly David, talks about how when, when the Israelites were removed from Egypt, that God himself sent evil angels to actually produce his will. Now, here, here is a speculative version of what might actually transpire at this point. 2012, because we're talking about an overturn of hierarchy. We're talking about an angelic realm where their moral alignment is against God, but judicially, they're allowed to remain until a certain time has been allotted for a gathering of ed evidence to actually show in court. It's a judicial system where we inherited our judicial system from the Western canon, and especially the idea of law as it is in the Old Testament. 